All right, so our environment is set and next we get to eat. So before we eat, before we take that first bite, I wanna emphasize a couple things. So one, I've just served myself food. Again, it might not always be freshly cooked food, but it is beneficial if you can smell and prepare your food a little bit. It's a little bit better for digestion, but anyway. So before I take my first bite, I want to take a few deep breaths to get in the right mindset for eating. So to try to separate myself from a busy work day or traffic or what tension that I feel, I want to decrease that. So I'm just gonna take a couple of deep breaths, start to build awareness in how I feel right now. That was good, but I'm just gonna take another couple of deep breaths. I say at least three, maybe five if you're really stressed, but hopefully you can kind of feel that tension and anxiety decreasing. I already feel kind of in a calmer state. So this is a better state to eat within. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel as anxious. You can already feel or hopefully hear my tone of voice has changed. I'm much calmer just from taking those few deep breaths. So try to do that as best you can before you eat. This also obviously helps reduce stress that may bleed over from the rest of your day and put you in a better mindset um, for enjoying our wonderful meal we have here. So Got my plate here. Another thing you can do before you start eating is kind of check in with your hunger cues. How hungry are you? Are you just having a snack? Are you having a full meal? Are you stuffed already? Are you starved? Try to rank that if you can. So I use a scale from one to five. One being I'm not very hungry at all. Five being I'm absolutely ravenous. So that puts a little bit of a marker on it and you can always compare that later in your meal or after the meal, like, am I full or should I eat some more? Things like that. This is also a time, especially if you've had a very, very negative relationship with food, where you can practice gratitude and positivity around eating. If you may have, you know, had a lot of experience with diet culture and you feel bad for eating, maybe you have some weight to lose and you feel bad eating when you have a weight loss goal. We have to eat, we have to eat to, to survive. So part of this challenge is retraining the thought patterns that you have in your head to be more positive. So before I eat, I'm gonna say like, I'm doing a really good job, I prepared this meal for me. Even if this wasn't the perfect, most balanced meal, I'm doing a really good job because I'm feeding myself when I'm hungry and I need nutrition to be healthy, to survive, etc. So try to sit down and tell yourself a good job for doing something. So we again, start to change that thought pattern in our head to something that's more positive um, that we can build on in the future. Next up, just a little side note. So if you are someone who has been diagnosed with type two diabetes, has prediabetes or high blood sugars, high hemoglobin A1C, or if you've ever been told by a medical practitioner that you have high blood sugars and you need to watch your carbohydrate intake, this is one little thing that you can add in that can help with that, despite what's on your plate. <laughs> so if my blood sugar is kind of high and I want to eat a meal in a way that is better, that will help me balance my blood sugar, I'm gonna eat my protein first. So I have some turkey here um, that, with the vegetables first. Basically, I would leave the starchy carbohydrates, which for me right now is rice, till last. So that way I'm stabilizing my blood sugar with the protein and with those veggies, and then I'll have some of the starch. Okay, so with all that said, I'm finally gonna dig in. So I take my first bite, I'm gonna sit and chew it. I put my fork down. Bear with me, you won't have to watch me eat all of this, I promise. Done. So I swallowed that when it was near liquid consistency. This is really gonna help with digestion. Your mouth is a crucial part of the digestive process. So really taking your time to chew, even if you have a liquid meal. So those soups, smoothies, protein shakes, things like that, be really beneficial if you could chew a little bit and slowly consume it, not just chug it as fast as you can. That would be really helpful for digestion as well. Okay, so I'm ready for my next bite. Completely clear with that one. This time I'm gonna get a little bit of the vegetables going in there. And adding some salad, even if it's a little bit at the bottom of your meal, is really good for making you slow down a little bit. It's really hard to eat a salad really fast. So that's another benefit aside from the nutrition that's in the meal or the food itself. It's just that it takes you a little bit longer to eat. Fork goes down and chew my food. I'm gonna stay on your hands if you want to. Sometimes it's a reflex to just pick up your fork and keep shoveling. 
So we're trying to change that. Done. So basically, I'm going to continue to do that back and forth, putting my fork down. If you're eating with people, talk, enjoy your evening. If we can extend out the meal process, our brain has a longer time to tell us that we are actually full and we can stop eating. If you're someone who struggles to not overeat and you tend to blow past that fullness cue, we can also create um, kind of reminders or check-in points for us. So if this is a particular problem for you, one, obviously we can serve ourselves a smaller portion. We can always go back for more, but we can start with the smaller portion and see if we can be content with that. So again, that gives us an opportunity. It puts a barrier between me and a, more food by having to go get it, go back to the kitchen and prepare it again or serve myself. Another way that we can add those checkpoints in is if we say, I'm gonna eat half of this and then I'm gonna check in and see where I'm at. So you can kind of think of your plate as like a clock. I'm gonna eat half of it and then check in. I'm gonna eat three quarters of it and then I'm gonna check in. If I have a little bit left, it's like, see if I can leave some left on my plate. Great, if not, it's totally fine. It's not the wrong answer to actually finish your plate. That's fine. But we do want to check in with, am I full? Am I hungry? Can I stop? Ask yourself those questions. And if you can say, yep, yeah, I'm good now, go ahead and stop. Even if there's food on your plate, it's not wasteful. You can always put it in a Tupperware container and have it as a snack later. That is not a problem. It is not a waste to leave food on your plate. 